Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Warfare Ecology. It is Relationship Monday, and I'm excited to to hear and see. There we go. We, you know, we run a little bit behind today. You know, we we took advantage of those couple days that we had off, so it was a little bit of a rough start trying to get everything going back. So, welcome. Go ahead and make sure you like and share and tell a friend that Warfare Ecology is on the air. It is going to be, oh yeah, today is Tuesday. Look, and I'm still thinking we on Monday. <laughs> that should tell y'all something. So you already know, today is gonna be a great day. It's Eschatology Tuesday. Dr. Kevin Williams will be with us. My days are still running a little bit behind because I truly enjoyed the three days that I had off. I didn't do anything, absolutely nothing. And so it was a blessing. And I was so excited about that. So go, go ahead and like and share. Tell a friend that Warfare Ecology is on the air. So we have a treat for you guys this week. It's gonna be a phenomenal week. And so with that being said, you know, tomorrow, we're gonna have Bishop Janine Hyman is gonna be joining us again. And I'm excited to hear what that woman of God has to say. And on Thursday, the deliverance team will be here, Overseer Ronnie King, Apostle Shirley Brown. And on Friday, we are going to have most likely a special day, a day with the Bishop. And that's something that we don't get that often on Warfare Ecology. So just know that just in case you missed anything or you want to see, an old episode, you can always tune in on Facebook at Bishop G. Bloomer or on YouTube at the General of Warfare. So get ready, it's gonna be phenomenal. Go ahead and get those questions ready, put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com and we will do our best to get your questions answered for you live today on the air. So good afternoon, Evelyn, how are you? I'm doing great, Tamila, and I pray that you are, my dear. I am. And I'm still here thinking it's Monday. <laughs> we had an extra day. See, you still thought it was running regular because you're always on cue. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we had, and I'm like, then somebody texts and said, "Oh, it's too. Oh, yeah, it is Tuesday." <laughs> you know, it's it's understandable. <laughs> you no, know, we didn't. We didn't really know what to do with ourselves on Monday yesterday. You're right. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> we had a little bit of time. So it was uh -huh. great though. I appreciated it. And you know, and it was just yeah. a great opportunity to kind of like recharge the battery. Yes. You know, and I got yes, I agree. time and that's what I did. And so normally whenever yeah. I, I do that and I make sure that I get a few days in a row to recharge, I come out with all kinds of ideas. Uh oh. <laughs> that I'm gonna get done. And so yeah, I got a few of those on my plate now. So we're gonna all see right. what happens and what not. <laughs> So thank you so much, Evelyn. We'll probably be talking a little bit. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, everyone. So it, it appears that BK is not going to be with us today. So, you know, when we do this, I'll just tell you what I know and how, you know, the things that I have learned about these products since we've been doing this, you know, we've been, we open up the show and we talk about CBD almost like every single day that Warfare Ecology is on the air. And one thing that we have to know for sure that this is not a drug. This is a plant. It is, these are all the CBD products are coming from the hemp plant because the body does have an endocannabinoid system and it's looking for those cannabinoids that are found in that particular plant. And so there's so, so many great things that are in it. So we have the CB1 and the CB2 receptors and each one does different things. And so that body with the CB1 receptors is dealing with like the appetite, your thinking, your short-term memory, and you know, like your perception, all types of great stuff. And then with the CB2s, it's dealing with things like your, your skin, your gut, and you know, like tumors and things like that. So there's a lot of great things that this endocannabinoid system is doing and is searching for. And it is searching for, and you can only get that in the cannabis, you know, those hemp plant derivatives. That's where you find that kind of stuff at. So the thing that we have learned is that 
a lot of the products that we have that are on Bloomer Wellness. So if you go to Bloomer Wellness, a great way to introduce yourself to these great products is the Bloomer Wellness Bundle. It gives you several different ways that you can try out the um, that you can try out the the CBD and see how you can introduce it into your daily regimen. So you get four full size of these particular products. So you get the gummies. Of course, you guys know that's my favorite. And then you also get the tincture, the hand sanitizer, and your choice of gel relief or salve. So when you get all of these products together, it gives you an ultimate and powerful experience. And so this bundle itself is only $55. And just so you know, if you bought a tincture, one tincture is like $65. So basically, you're buying a tincture, and then you're getting the rest of this for free. So this is just an awesome way, and it's very, very economical and cost-friendly. And you can get this product, and, and if you order two of those, you can get two of them and save $10. And so you get two for 100 and you would get free shipping on that. So I encourage you, go to bloomerwellness.com today and take advantage of that Bloomer Wellness bundle. It is a great way to introduce yourself to the family of CBD and see how those products can truly bless you. And then also, so I got a little bit of an update. We got the, this is the product feature for June. It is the pain stick. So I guess this is one of those products that you're able to, to rub on and it should help you out with you know, eliminating pain and things of that nature. So don't know if it's a special price on that, but you can go to bloomerwellness.com and search for that product and you can find it. But one thing I did notice before we got on the air today is that the gummies, my favorite, the buy one, get one, is still on sale. It's still on the site. So if you messed around and didn't get your gummies last month, you can go ahead and go to bloomerwellness.com and take advantage of getting those gummies. It's, I love them. Love them, love them, love them. I ordered a bunch of them last month, and so I'm excited about it. But, you know, these, these are some great products. And, you know, one thing that we have to realize is that is when it comes to the myths and facts about CBD is that these are not drugs. This is all derived from a plant, and it's just a plant that is designed to, to it actually gives the body something that it needs. And so, you know, you have to make sure that you educate yourself on the products that are out there and the medicinal effects of CBD, because there's some great ones that are out there for it. And there's a lot of people who have great testimonies about using CBD and how it has helped them with their daily regimen, you know, with arthritis, pain, inflammation, and all that good stuff. But I encourage you before you do any type of additions to your daily regimen, get with your physician and make sure that this is the way that you need to go because you wanna make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do for yourself so you can take care of you. All right, so that's our Bloomer Wellness segment of the day. So go ahead and get those questions ready, get them in the chat. We would love to hear from you. And also while you're putting those questions in the chat or you're emailing us, go ahead and send us your testimony. Let us know how Warfare Ecology has blessed you. You know, we've been doing this for a while and I'm sure there's some great stories that are out there of how the Lord is moving on your behalf. And if we overcome by the word of the testimony. So I encourage you to go ahead and share that with us. We wanna hear your story. We wanna be able to share your story with other people because you know, a lot of the times the things that we go through are not necessarily for us. They're for the ones that are coming behind us so that we can share those, those stories with people so that they can be blessed, be blessed and they can move forward. And also know that our food giveaways Will not, we will not have any food giveaways throughout the month of June. We are actually transitioning to a food bank. Yes, we've got the food bank going on. So the food giveaways will not be starting back up until July 7th. And so they're still gonna be on Wednesdays at Bethel Family Worship Center. And we will let you know exactly the times and the locations to where the others will be doing theirs. So just pass the word. Food giveaways will be July starting July 7th. So for the month of June, we're taking this time out to get everything transitioned so that we can be ready to become that official food bank. It is just amazing, amazing. So you guys know that yesterday was Memorial Day and I just wanted to share a little bit of information. 
and facts about Memorial Day that a lot of people probably don't know. Because, you know, most of the time, you know, we hear Memorial Day and we think, you know, yes, it is for the fallen soldiers and those that have served and things of that nature. But the first Memorial Day was actually in 1865 in Charleston, South Carolina. And it was honoring those soldiers that had died in the Civil War. And these, this is done by, it was done by slaves. Black people did this. And then there's also, you know, then the next one came up in New York and that was in Waterloo, New York or something like that. So do your due diligence and do your research on your history and know that there are things that we have done as a people that doesn't, a lot of people don't necessarily know. So this, and then also one thing that you really need to know and what you should do is when if you do your research on Memorial Day, make sure you figure out why the flag is folded the way that it is. It's amazing. There's a lot of great information out there about what happens with each fold and what each fold means because it's 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 truly a it's a ceremony that that has a lot of great meaning to it. So that's your Memorial Day tidbit of information for today. All right, so get ready, get those questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. All right, Evelyn, so let's talk a little bit. Yes, ma'am. You ready for today? <laughs> Look, as ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> right, because, you know, it's like, with, with you know, Dr. Kevin Williams wasn't with us last week, so you got a yeah. little bit of a break. Been away for a minute, but I was still rolling, I'm telling you. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure that because he wasn't with us last week, we are truly about to be in for an overload today. I do believe so. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this, out of all the things that we have seen and encountered on Warfare Ecology, what is your favorite part? My learning. Okay. Um, just opening up my mind and my understanding because there have been scriptures down through the years that we have accepted as being one way. But as we have seen the, the chiefs in place from Monday through Friday, they have opened our eyes to see the truth. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it makes a difference. It really makes a difference. And it doesn't seem like what we were taught was too far off, but the, it seems like at that point and that season, they were not going in depth. They were topical. And so, you know, everything happens for a reason, but I'm glad that this season we're being taught and the truth is coming forth. Oh yeah. You know, and you know, that, 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 that uh, statement that you made about it being topical. So let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. Do you think that sometimes it all depends on, on where we are you know, if we are babes in Christ, you know, it, it, sometimes we're not prepared to, to eat meat. And so we yes. have to do mm -hmm. milk. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I know like sometimes I can hear a message one day, mm -hmm. come back and hear the same message the next day and mm -hmm. hear two totally different things. That's so true. And That's I think true. It, it just depends on where I'm at mentally. Mm -hmm physically and all that good stuff from mm -hmm. when I hear the message to when I hear it the next time. Mm -hmm. Now that's us. Mm -hmm. I believe that as listeners. And I, and I guess my question goes out to the leaders. Mm -hmm. They have to extend themselves more and not try to please the people. Um, I, I guess in growing up, I've seen different things, um, not to throw knives and all that good stuff, but there have been leadership that always tried to please their congregation mm -hmm. um, because of where they stood and they were being taken care of and things of that sort. That was way back when. <laughs> and it's sad to say, but it was true. Right. It was true. And I, I just want our leaders to just know, you know, we love them. We, we cannot take care of you any better than God. <laughs> Just, just go seek his face and get the truth out and we'll receive it. You know, we might come screaming and hollering, but we'll receive it. <laughs> right, right. But you know, and also at the same time though, you know, 
how can they hear less you know yes you know what i'm saying but you're right we also have to make sure we do our due diligence and study for ourselves mm-hmm Mm -hmm. you know, two-way thing yes two-way thing because mm -hmm. you know you can you know to me it's like it's nothing more satisfying to actually get a revelation from god yes on what a scripture means and, it, and it's i know king probably get tired of me because whenever it happens <laughs> i let him have it <laughs> i'd be like look i'm just fool just listen <laughs> hear me out <laughs> This is what this is what I heard the Lord say. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But, you know, <laughs> I know he gets out of it, but you know, and I, and I appreciate him as my friend just for doing that for me because you know, uh -huh. because sometimes it can be overwhelming. I can't in do that with just anybody. It, it, it won't. It won't happen. Mm -mm. Yeah, it will it's not. Awesome. So he, God gave you a listening ear. He gave you overseer. <laughs> Yeah, but I know he'd be tired of it sometimes. <laughs> what they say, iron sharpens iron, yes, you know, yes. and, and if you guys are yet striving and you both are reaching, you know, one time you go, oh God, I got to share this. Boom, 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 boom. That those keys start flowing and you share it with who God opens up for you to share it with. Exactly. So, <laughs> I love that part, you know. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what happens in our, in our state of the union address on monday on monday in the mornings <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh wow you know but wow. it's a good thing it does it, it happens almost every morning i mean we could start out talking business yes. but something will happen something gets said and i'll be like okay now now you got the scripture <laughs> i love it you'll be like yup. love it. And da -da 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 -da. it never fails <laughs> King inherited that responsibility. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. <laughs> and it is, it is amazing. That is, to me, that is just a, a, a beautiful gift to have. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? Just to be able to say, well, there's a scripture that says da 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 Yes. I mean, you know, we all have our script. I mean, like I have ones that I go to because they're the ones that mm -hmm. I'm on, you know, depending on what's going on. Yes. What the situation may be. But uh -huh. just out of, out of the blue, a random thing. It's like, okay, there's a scripture about that. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> it's good though. Mm -hmm. it's good. Now I'm going to tell you what I was looking at, Tamila. I had gone back to our meetings in January, first mm -hmm. of this year. Okay. And it was on the 5th of January. And one of the statements, and we're, look, we're talking now, and it says, everything is for an appointed time. Yes. No, <laughs> I saw that. I said, that's what me and Tamila are talking about right now. <laughs> And it really is. It is. No, it is wow. a point of time, and I, and I think that a lot of the times we don't, we forget that, mm -hmm. because you know, uh, God's time and our time, and then girl, <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. Amen. Yeah. You know, we will forget that mm -hmm. everything is for an appointed time, but you know, we kind of live in a society that's a microwave society. Yes. And we want everything instant. Right. Now, 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 mm -hmm. now, now. And that's not the way it works. I agree. There are some things that will come instant and those some some of those things that come instant, we're not ready for. Amen. And mm -hmm. then there are some things that it takes 15 years, uh, uh -huh. the river three times. Yes. <laughs> and it's still not here. That's right. <laughs> and we've been like, but God, you. Yeah, that's right. But mm -hmm. it's all. And then when it falls into place, it's like, wow. Go, wow. Thank you. Yeah. So true. You know, yes, a, it's, but you know, it's, it's just, you know, they that wait upon the Lord. You better say it, girl. <laughs> Amen. Because, you know. Going to yeah. run. We're going to mount up. We're going to do it all. <laughs> and then and all, and doing all of that, we have to yes. that his grace is sufficient. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Girl, you better put some words together. <laughs> you know, I mean, those those are things that that you know, it's it's different segments of different scriptures and stuff like that. But you know, I have to pull on stuff like that just yes. to keep myself going. That's you know? so true. And I think that you know, as long as we got a foundation and we are strongly anchored in mm -hmm. the word, then you know, you you can't really go wrong. You, you better just, say it. You just got to make sure that your foundation is strong and it's true. Thank you, Tamela. You can hang on to what you got. 
you know, I'm you, telling you. I may I may not know a lot, but I, I know what I know. Hello. Okay. I mm -hmm. know what I know, and I know the God that I serve and who he is to me. Amen. And so can't nobody take that away from me. They cannot, honey. I don't care how hard they try. Hmm. Not it's at done. All. Because when I look at where he brought me from, Amen. I'm catching a glimpse of where he's taken me. <sighs> Say it. <laughs> you couldn't pay I'm there. Me Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. I don't have money in the world for that. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, you, you said a mouthful. You just couldn't. You know, and, and I mm -hmm. and I get so excited because yes. it's like, oh my God. Yes. You know, especially when you can sit back and, you know, you get a lot of what over this past year, I've gotten a whole lot of words. A whole oh, yes. Lot of prophecies. Oh, yes. But my very, very, very first prophecy that I ever received was from Bishop. Yes. And it was like April 2008. Wow. And those things that he said in that prophecy are finally yes. starting to materialize. Wow. But we have to be patient. You and do. It's a lot of the times when we get a word, sometimes it's not a right now. Thank you. Sometimes this is something that's meant to speak to your future because mm -hmm. what the power principle couldn't tell you what number it is, you know, behave yourself today. I, I remember that. So who or where you're going to be tomorrow. Amen. So, you know, when we get a word and stuff like that, we have to make sure that we are governing, governing ourselves accordingly because mm -hmm. We never want to get, this is another power principle, we never <laughs> want to get somewhere in life that our character can't sustain us. You better say it. You know? Amen. Amen. It's, it's just, I agree. so, you know, mm -hmm. I, I guess I got a lot to say today, huh? <laughs> you, well, it's okay. It's okay. We know what, you know, like from whence we've come, you know, we know because like you said, those things grew in us mm -hmm. and they had to have a place to grow. So when it uh, came into mm -hmm. us, it sat there for a little bit until, you know, we were able to marinate it and get it to work inside of us. And we go, oh, you know, yeah, I heard so that's going to work. That works for me now. Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, you can, you can get something that speaks to, you know, a lot of times we get a word, mm -hmm. especially if it's, you know, a true prophecy that yes. it, is, it is not meant for now, because most of the time when you get those words, your now situation don't look nothing like that. Amen. I agree. Nothing like I that. I agree. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just have to trust in the Lord. Girl, and lean not mm -hmm. to not on the say it, say it, say it. <laughs> you said you know, that with power <laughs> because it's easy to say, yes, but it's hard to do. Yes, you know, you can say, Trust him, trust in the Lord, trust him. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let me see you do it. Right, mm -hmm. tell me mm -hmm. how you did it without, yes. without fault. And without you gotta say it. Amen. It's, it's easy, way easier said than done. Yes, it is, hon. You know. Yes, it is. Well, yes, it is. I That's just, why. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we've learned that word. Now we got another one. We're kingdom minded people. Yes. So we come to realize, and that's where that's where you're talking from. Mm -hmm. Your kingdom mind. You know that there's a kingdom somewhere for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. It that's is. where you are. You know, and it, and it's like. How can we get to a point where mm -hmm. we don't want to share the Amen. of the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because we all got a story to tell. Yes. You know, and, and that, that story is something that is meant to be. It's not just for some for us just to live and go through the story mm -hmm. at one point mm -hmm. in time and then just forget about it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it's this you go through something and it's meant to be yes a learning experience yes. but it's also mm -hmm. meant to be something that you you talk to somebody else about so that you know you can say move this here do this here and you'll be out uh-huh mm -hmm. even though for you it took you five years to come out mm -hmm. you tell them to move this here and move this there, and they'd be out in three days instant there you go mm -hmm. you know and then you know because it all comes down to him never putting more on us than we can bear. Amen. 
Amen. You know, a lot of the times you'd be like, Lord, why you do? Because you can handle it. Yeah. And, and then, you know, we, I think that a lot of times, we, you know, we kind of get down on ourselves and we, for, you know, we're much stronger than what we think mm -hmm. are. Yeah, I know I do. I'm guilty of that. I, I'm I, guilty of that. I, yeah. Because <laughs> it'll hit me and I go, God, what? <laughs> what is this? Exactly. Oh, God. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's amazing, though. I love the Lord. <laughs> I do, so too. I do, too. And he heard our cry. <laughs> and that and he did. Say it. <laughs> that his word is just so quick like the word of god says it's quick and it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and once it starts piercing our hearts tamila i believe that opens us up all the more because when it truly hits us i mean hits you mm -hmm. it's like okay ah mm -hmm. uh, yeah that was for me <laughs> right and, you know, and it, it's funny, though, because like yesterday I was having a conversation with the overseer and mm -hmm. I had made the comment of when I when I truly got saved, when I got okay. saved. OK, I hear you. He was like, well, what does that mean? He said, what does that mean? You started going to church more? I said, no, because mm -hmm. even whenever I was saved, I was still going to church, mm -hmm. still participating and everything like that. But right. When I saved for real. I hear you. I know what you're, where you're coming from. It quit being about going to church and started being about seeking the face of God mm -hmm. and my relationship, my worship experience, all of that. Mm. And that is when I knew I was really saved. Amen. For me, that's what it was. That's good. I mean, that's your testimony, honey. I can't speak for nobody else. Yeah, that's your walk. Mm -hmm. you know? That's your walk. And it's a true walk because it's yours. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> nobody take that from me. That's either. right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. You know, because you know, people always, you know, that's right. You know, it's it, every, because Every man and woman has to walk out their own soul self. Amen. There you go. Right we there. We have to do that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what, it's our walk. Mm -hmm. You know, we often can, always can say, well, oh, I should have did this. Well, if I wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't See? have done that. Mm -hmm. And we can't deal with the coulda, woulda, shoulda. Uh, hello. Because that doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. those situations and circumstances that we have gone through that mm -hmm. put us in a position to where we are. And those are the things that makes us the people that we have become and we're mm -hmm. de destined to be. You know, Amen. I so agree. Out of all the things that I have gone through in my life that have not been great, yes. I have my fair share. Mm -hmm. All of that right there. Would I change any of it? And the answer is no. Right. Because of the experience, even though I didn't like it while I was going. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Say that. <laughs> yes. You know, because yes. Of the experience of it, mm -hmm. it changed my way of thinking about a lot of things. Amen. And it changed the, the person that I am and it made me grow into a better person. I love that. That's that's so true. That is so true. You know. I'm telling you. That's just what it is. So. Mm -hmm. I love the Lord, and that's all I can tell you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and shoot, I say you had no testimony if you didn't have a test. That's why they extended that word. <laughs> exactly. And what they also say, with no mess, there's no message, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Because it's it's just amazing. And I think that a lot of the times people we just get caught up on, you know, why not just tell the Lord thank you? Amen. You feel like you ain't got nothing to say thank you for. You got up this morning, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Important to deal with your mess that you went to bed with last night. Honey, that's ooh, say it. Because if you woke up this morning, you still got time to get it right. Yes. He still got time to fix it. Amen. Because he that's what he's gonna do. Yes, oh. yes, yes, <laughs> girl. You better say it, say it. <laughs> say it. Make me want to throw my shoe. Okay. <laughs> That shoe up. I know you've been practicing throwing that candy down the hallway. I have. I'm practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working at it. 
you a mess. Well, we need to laugh too. And I, I want people to know that, you know. You know, and we, we just have to remember that mm-hmm. as believers, I'm all over the board with these scriptures. That's there, okay, go. Now, therefore, no condemnation. Yes. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. You know, we can sit there and try to kill ourselves dead over the stuff that we did. God ain't worried about that because Mm -mm. you cover with the blood. Thank you. Thank you. You Thank you. It makes no sense at all. None. And, you know, when we get to the point that we can that we can see that and believe that for ourselves. Yes. Our walk gets a lot. Girl, you better say it. Okay, that's all I got. But God God is good. He's so good. Thank you, Evelyn. Good Take afternoon. Care. All right. Good so, afternoon. Evelyn, where, 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 where are you going, Evelyn? Oh, I was leaving, uh, Bishop. You had come forth. <laughs> As pure gold? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, it's good to be back in the United States of America and mm-hmm. um, the trip to, uh, to Nigeria was wonderful. It was outstanding. It was a blessing. And um, I'm, I'm so happy and excited to be back in the country with all of you wonderful people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's going to be a great, great day today. Um, yes, sir. But I'm, lo- I'm, 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 I'm still a little, um, I'm a little jet lagged. I was wondering about that, Bishop. Yeah, so for me, let me see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's like nine o'clock or 10. And so I, I I can feel the 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 lag pulling mm-hmm. a little uh, a little bit, but um, I'm happy to be back, and I want to thank all of you guys for standing in and pulling it off and doing what it is that you do to make things happen the way that it happens, and um, y'all guys did a fantastic job, and you know when the job is fantastic when my friends uh, who are in ministry you know mm-hmm. flip over there watch the program a little bit. And then they say, Bloma, it's just like you still there. Like you was right there. So, you know, you need to talk to my team, my staff. And I just, I just, I just want to, you know, thank God for you guys and thank God for, for the whole thing. It's just coming together. It's it's, it's, it's really coming together. Now in about 20 something days, we're going to be up under the big top tent. Okay. Uh, uh, Oh yes. Following all the social, the social socials that we are supposed to follow. You see, I got my African. I like that. Home. That's nice. You know why, right? None no. of my clothes are clean. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that's going to be that's going to be our tester to see how we're going to move in terms of going back into the sanctuary and opening up. I know Amen. we're not going to be in there in the month of July or August. Mm-hmm. If the closest yes, would be if we do anything early, it would be September. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, sir. My, I'm aiming for uh, New Year's Eve night to be our first uh, big time together but um Amen. some things may change and things may happen and so uh our great mm-hmm. tester is the uh, and it starts on father's day so sunday Amen. and then in the month of august yes. uh, uh, in the month of august we're going to be having a clerk conference of course much smaller okay. clerk conference and we're believing that the lord is going to take us to south carolina to do it to bishop wow. brown territory and grounds awesome. uh, to do it, give a few of the people of our church a chance to get up and let's all go out someplace together. And so let's get ready for these two major events to happen and the blessings of the Lord to uh, uh, overtake us and bring us into okay. a place called greatness. Uh, those of you that are watching today, tell a neighbor, tell a friend, Bishop Bloom is in town today and it's Warfare Ecology and it's Eschatology Tuesday. And uh, Kevin Williams is going to come with some great stuff for us. I need a I need a piece of paper, if I can. They they even moved your uh the, the paper machine. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> okay, and um, let's get ready to um, open up the heavens, and uh, let's see uh, what happens. Uh, today is my first day back, and um, I mean I got this challenge from. One of my uh, one of my publishers, and so I have a challenge today um, from one of our uh, one of our publishers um, to uh, challenge our people who are watching and who's a part of this today 
to bring us to a $4,000 uh, mark and they're gonna match it. So that helps us to meet what we need to meet here and help us to meet what we need to meet abroad. I need you to help me today. I need you to help me that, you know, 40 people can really do this. 40 people can sow a seed of hundred dollars and every hundred you sow is 200 and we can um, get this done. So I have a challenge before me today of 4,000 and I wanna meet it by the time we go off the program uh, today in the name of Jesus. And I'm gonna sow um, uh, 400, which would be the tithe for the 4,000 for uh, uh, today and just believe God. All right, uh, uh, it's time to open up the heavens. Bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that is not room enough to receive it. Malachi 3 and 10. Whoa. The windows of heaven are open. All right, every seed sown into it is a soul saved and a stomach filled, a body filled with food. That's, that's what's gonna happen. And that's what's, that's what's gonna happen and that's what's there. So let's be, let's be blessed in the name of Jesus. Okay, uh, 27, oh, that's 10 people. I'm believing God to sow a seed of $90. 90 is the number of days that the Ark of the Covenant was at Obadiah's house before leaving at Benadad's house for 20 years, the process of the elimination blessing, process of the elimination of blessing on you, on your life, in the name of Jesus. I need 10 of you to do that. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Stand up, stand up, stand up, get, 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 stand up, get in place, and, 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 and do this with me today in the name of Jesus. Do not let me go off the program today without reaching my four. I got to reach that four today in order to get that four. Four for four. You hear that, Adelia? Five for five. This is four for four. For every one, I get one. Let's do this in the name of Jesus. Kalth Zen, number 27. Kalth Zen, 27. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. That shall be my creed today, that we shall not leave empty. A Judah means praise. Praise means an open palm at the throat of your enemy. Your praise is designed to choke the hell out of what's been choking the hell out of you. Kalth Zen, an open palm in the service of spiritual warfare. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let us start sowing to open up the heavens. When Dr. Williams comes on, he's going to challenge us with the seed for today. Let's do this now in Jesus' name. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Let's start sowing that seed today. 21, 21 is that angelic traffic, angelic transit, angels in traffic and in transit on your behalf. And I will send the angel before you to keep you in the way, to bring you into the land, which I have spoken over against you. And so maybe next time you can change it to that scripture. That's a good scripture. That's Exodus 20, 20 something. Uh, but both, both of the scriptures is good, but that's a, that's, that's a real, real, a good one, you know, comes to me when I get going, all right? And so angelic traffic, we ask those that are sowing the $21 seed, you're sowing for uh, the cable network to continue to do what it is designed to do, and that's to keep us on, all right? That is our financial intercessors that are praying and believing and pushing in that area for us in the name of Jesus, all right? So dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, uh, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 
59, 15, 59. Over and above what we're doing, we have a challenge today for my missions and my mission to Africa of 4,000. My publishers are going to back us with a challenge. Thank God for you. Today, please help me to accomplish that. So every up to the number 4,000. So I need, listen to me carefully. My publishers is going to back me. So if I raise 4,000, he's going to give 4,000. There's a challenge. So every seed that you sow is doubling today. And I need that 4,000 today for this African endeavor, this, this, this family that I promised there. And he's going to back me along with this. So I'm believing God by the time the program goes off the air, we would have raised over and above what we normally need to do, but we would have raised that 4,000, that 4,000 today. Father, I just thank you in advance for those who will have a heart of compassion to sow into the lives of individuals who can't give back just cannot give back. We don't do this for a prophecy today. We don't do this for you to turn. We just do it out of the compassion of our heart. Vows of compassion open today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Those of you that are sowing towards the 4,000 today. You're sowing towards the 4,000 today. Uh, when you sow your seed, put up under your seed the double. The double. And then we know. I just need 40 people, 40 people to sow $100. Over and above whatever uh, the, the, the apostle is going to, the bishop's going to ask you to sow, whatever. The, I, I, I got to do this 4,000 today in the name of Jesus. This has got to happen by the time we go off. All right. Uh, Dr. Williams is here with us. How you doing today? I'm good, Bishop. How are you today? I'm fantastic. I'm in my African gear. Look good. Not because I'm bringing Africa back, but because none of my clothes are clean. <laughs> Africa was, it, it, it was amazing, but I found myself day after day after day repenting and asking God to keep me humble and to free me from... Um, Free me from arrogance that I thought was okay to walk in because I'm not talking about my accomplishments now. I'm just talking about poverty that I was raised up in is middle class to the poverty that they're raised up in. And, and you know, in America, sometimes we wear poverty as a badge of honor. We tell you in a heartbeat, no, I'm from the hood, you know, like that. Right. Negroes don't know the hood mm -mm. till they get down. You know what I'm talking about. Till they get down in and get down there in Ghana and in, 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 in Zimbabwe, in Nigeria. You know, it's unbelievable. People are going four and five days without eating at all, mm -hmm. at all. And so uh, uh, for a number of years, I've been taking care of five families a year. And this year I decided to by going into the areas that I went into that I'm going to take on 10, uh, 10 families. I'm gonna ask my friends to help me do it. We're gonna do a program uh, on it. And uh, for, I wanna take on 10 families for three to six months. Watch this, at a seed of $300 a month. So $300 a month for three months is $900. And that $900 can lift the person up out of poverty, bring them into a decent place to live and help them to start a business. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That's it. Um, but we're in the middle of a project right now. We've already purchased the land. We've already uh, um, dedicated the land. Uh, we did our groundbreaking. The plans are made for the school. We're just waiting for a little bit more funds to come in, but we're ready to roll uh, with that. Uh, uh, my publishers, I have four different publishers and my publisher, when I was on live the other night, said that if you raised it, because we need 8,000, he said, if you raise the 8,000, our publishing house will give you 8,000. So every seed that we raised was twice the amount. And today I have a $4,000 challenge. And if I raise the 4,000, my publisher is going to give me 4,000. We got to do this today in the name of Jesus. And so that's what I was talking about before 
uh, before you came on. On Wednesdays, we get upwards of between three, six, seven thousand people listening on all of the different platforms coming together. Raise four thousand dollars for us ain't nothing, ain't nothing. But when you need it, that's when the devil starts fighting. On a regular time, you know, we, uh, we, we, I don't know what's raised. You never asked me what's raised. I never asked you what's raised. We, these Negroes need to know how to have a partnership. We don't even talk to each other about money. Tell them, you don't do that. Because I know you got all the money. And so, <laughs> whatever I need, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, uh, um, and, um, you know, a couple of million, a couple of million Naira, uh, a couple of million Naira that's going into the school has already been sold by Dr. Williams when we first started the Witcher Call. So, you know, that, that's that. Today has got to be just one of those days that you help us to, uh, to, uh, to do this. So give us the seed challenge for today. Those of you that, are, that when you sow, you're sowing towards the uh, the 4,000, which I believe we're going to get in the next 20 minutes or so, uh, you put uh, the double under it. And I just want 40 people to sow $100 into that. That's not for prophecy, not for just you, you say, listen, I want to help. Here's what I can do. And if you can't do 100, you can do 50. Whatever you can do, make sure you put under it the double so we know where that's going. And then uh, those of you that are sowing the seed to open up the heavens, that's to keep our program running, our staff going and what have you, our food distribution is going and the seeds that you sow, that's where they go to. Dr. Williams. Uh, people of God, when you are sowing, um, the Bible talks to us and about uh, sowing seed and giving, um, lending to the poor and uh, how the people of God are blessed uh, because we do so. I, th I, I think that one of the things that, that is necessary for all of us is to make sure that we understand that as tough as we may have it, uh, there are people that have it tougher. Uh, I am a witness of what Bishop Boom is talking about uh, in, in the area of Africa where uh, one of my churches is, uh, you would be surprised. There's about, uh, and I forgot what the, the name is, but they have about 20 or 30,000 people living uh, in an area that is not houses, they're like 10 and huts and, and different things like that. And you may have um, you may have one or two wells, and I'm talking about pumping wells, where, where people are able uh, to get water. Now that is servicing all of these people. There's no electricity. There, there is none of that, none of that. And it is heartbreaking. And so uh, one of the things that, that when uh, we are adopting and committing to different families to be able to do that. Of course, it would be wonderful to be able to get everybody out. But here's the deal. If we can help one or two people or five or six people, uh, 10 people to come out of that situation, then we can go back and try to do it again to help some other people out. But at the same time, the people that get out are an encouragement to those individuals that are still in. And so for every individual, because uh, when there is an opportunity to be able to double your impact and allow a blessing to come, uh, that, that's key to do. And so I challenge each and every uh, individual right now. I am uh, with Bishop Bloomer in this. I'm going to sow, of course, myself, but I'm asking for everybody that will. Uh, let's sow $100. I'm asking for uh, at least, I'm going to ask for 50 people uh, to sow uh, $100 right now, just releasing it. And we, we will deal with eschatology in a minute. We'll deal with all of these other things in a minute. But right now, if you would, I challenge you, let's sow. Let's sow right now $100 uh, for every individual, 50 people to sow $100. Let's sow into what uh, in, into somebody's life, into a family's life, and let's change a family. Here's a situation. Every time you sow, whatever, whatever we do, whether it's helping families or uh, whether we're doing something in the community, God takes your seed and attributes the work of that seed to you. Why? Because it is your seed that is, um, that is supporting, that is undergirding or making that particular thing happen. When you hear the vision and then you sow into that vision, God is attributing the success of that and the efforts of that to you. And because he's attributing that to you, 
You don't have to be in Africa to have the benefit of being there and for God to say, and I'm going to bless you because of this, because of this particular family, because of this particular tribe, because of this particular group. So right now, right now, I ask everybody, if you would, to go ahead and let's sow. Let's sow right now. In fact, I need to get my phone. And we're going to sow right now that one hundred dollars. And so and so when we when we when we do all of those kinds of things, I've got so much going on right here. When we do all of those kinds of things of sowing and believing and and trusting God and 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 trusting God to do great things, we will see the manifestation of the favor of God come forth within our lives. And so right now, dollar sign Bishop George G. Bloomer. I have to look at that again. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, paypal.me forward slash GGB Ministries, text to give at Bloomer at 844-889-1559. Uh, you can uh, mail it to GG Bloomer Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. You can give at Givelify, put GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box. And then when you put it in the search box, um, then you sow that seed right there. So let's give right now. Uh, we're believing God for um, at least 50 people to sow $100. I am going to uh, put my seed in right now. Give me just a moment. And um, uh, there we are. All right. So uh, y'all give me a minute because I can't do two things at one time uh, right now, especially with my typing. All right, for sure. Um, and so let's believe God together. Um, Bishop George G. Bloomer. There we are. Bishop George G. Bloomer. All right. So I've sowed my seed. You sow your seed. Uh, and let's get that done. I got to make sure that goes all the way through. Um, and uh, let's see what's happening. Um, if we're uh, Bishop, we may be having some problems. Take a look at what's going on with Cash App. We may be having some problems there. Okay, we're, we're checking on that now. Okay. And so I'm going to ask everybody, if you did just like I did and you could not get that through, then let's look at another method and let's go ahead and get that done. I, I, I will uh, definitely send mine. I'll send it through uh, Zelle uh, in just a bit, but it takes a little bit more of my, of, of my attention. All right. So uh, right now, would you put up where the people of God can sow? I'm not going to say cash app right now, Bishop. Um, okay, we got cash app. It's working now. All right, good. All right, so cash app, dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer. Uh, dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. Uh, PayPal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Text Bloomer at 844-889-1559. Um, GG Bloomer Ministries. Uh, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Uh, you can, uh, on Givelify, put GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box. And let's give that $100 right now. And let's sow and let's believe God. Because I am believing God for um, that 4000 to be done very quickly. So that in turn, um, you can get the double and this family can get the blessing of these families uh, can get the blessing. So let's do that right now. Let's do that right now. Bishop Bloom, I'm going to turn it over to you uh, just so that uh, you can share with the people of God uh, really what's happening and uh, what you're doing with these families. Um, well, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, standing in, um, or not, not standing in, but just doing what you do, because on Tuesday nights, I'd be the one, Tuesday, I'd be the one standing in. <laughs> but to do what, uh, do what you do and how just phenomenally it was it was done and then being in a different uh, environment we're starting to move around a little bit right now and 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 and, and deal with things like that secondly i'm i'm sowing a seed today of 400 which is the tithe for the 4000 to secure to to secure that so that's that's my seed into uh this uh endeavor that we are doing in the name of jesus um thirdly um when you bless somebody that does not have oh let me ask you Kevin, was you able to get in touch with uh, with with the person in 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 um in um Pittsburgh? Deal is done, Bishop. Okay, good. Deal is done. Don't make me fall on the floor. 
<laughs> no, the, the deal is done. Uh, see, 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 so, so can we talk about it a little bit? Oh, we can talk about it openly. Because the deal is done, right? The deal so is done. we have this discussion going on while you're sowing your seed. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Uh, if you go into the garage, in, into the get, look into the washroom, the boxes of books is in there. Bring me two of those books. So I'm I'm invited to I'm invited to the uh, eschatology uh, summit, the masterclass on eschatology, the, the the summit. The atmosphere is literally electrified and it is captured, and I'm there because me and him been doing warfare ecology together. But there's no room or space to talk about anything. If you, you if you discuss anything within that atmosphere, you know it just doesn't. It, that's the kind of night it was. I don't know if you sense that. That's the kind of night it was. You did. It was just. And so uh, Dr. Williams gets up and he starts teaching, and then he starts going into areas that nobody's heard before. Or I, let me put it this way, because people get offended when you say nobody heard it before. They never heard it that way before. And so it starts going to that. So um, after we do Q's and A's, I turned to Dr. Williams and I said to him, this is your witchcraft in the pews. Mm -hmm. Kevin said, what? I said, no, no, I'm telling you, this is your witchcraft in the pews. There's no black guy on, on the planet doing this. They don't put the time and the study into it, which called plus, even if they studied it, they wouldn't, you, you got revelation that is coming, that is backing things up. And I'm, that's why I'm telling you, this is your witchcraft in the pews. Bam. I got to go because we got a service that night with Reverend Mother Esther. I leave. Few days go by, few weeks go by. Me and Kevin is talking on the phone and the spirit comes back on me again. I said, this is your this is your witchcraft in the pews. Nothing can be discussed while this is being discussed. And if somebody comes in and start having a conversation, two things is going on. One, it's the spirit of distraction, or two, the person is competing. And in mm -hmm. both of those areas, you die. Mm -hmm. You never live in those areas. So I said, I said, so I got, we got to, let's, let's, let's put this in. You said, well, I'm writing a book about it. I said, let's put this into a book for you. So, you know, I'm pretty much done writing the book. And I'm putting the book together. And I said, well, I'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm get the, and then the Holy Spirit prompted me, do it now. So I say, Kevin, hold on one minute. I call one of our publishers. Cause I see I had spoken to it. Let me tell another part of the story. I had spoken to another publisher that you and me was on. We did their podcast for, which is uh -huh. another publishing house, right? Uh -huh. This guy tells me, oh, it's great and stuff like that. But uh, let's let's wait and see how things roll. And then we'll move on it the first of next year. So uh -huh. I already knew that we had a book deal. There's no uh -huh. ifs, ands, buts about it. So then that day when I called uh, uh, the other publisher and I started talking to him about it and stuff, he said, what? This is, this is what, so I said, hold on, I'm, I'm not explaining it adequately. Let me get the guy on the phone. So I put Kevin on the phone and Kevin gives, I said to Kevin, I said, Kevin, no disrespect those of you, me and Kevin been friends for years. I said, to, I said, Kevin, give him the 30 minute, the 30 second tour. So Kevin starts going there, 30 seconds, Kevin is done. And so the publisher's mouth is open, mine's is open. And so I said, keep on talking. He said, you want me to tell more? Yeah, I'm talking about, and he said, blah, blah, blah. So the publisher then stops him and says, listen, let us do this. Can I tell him? He said, let us do this, but the information is too much for one book. Let's do a three book deal. Good day in the morning. Now, you ain't never heard Kevin Williams, they ain't got nothing to say. That nigga was solid on the phone. Flip. Crickets. Crickets. So I say, Kevin, you there? He said, da, da. So they start talking back again. Kevin rolling, which call, hang the phone up. Kevin said, Bloomer, I got to get my mom on the phone. <laughs> I said, I got to get Bernard Jordan on the phone because <laughs> these prophecies are coming at too fast. Not one book, but a three book deal. Okay, so now here's the aftermath of it. So now that publisher whispers to the publishers in their publishing meeting that he has some eschatology works coming out, so on and so on like that. So I get a call from the first publisher and I said to him, Doc, I gave you the opportunity, but 
you told me at the beginning of the year and the revelations that he's having are coming to pass in real time. If we, if we wait, it's gonna be old, all right? We got an eschatology program that we were doing and you started talking about a war getting ready to break out. There's gonna be uneasiness in what you call it. There's some stuff coming out of Turkey, gave the name of Turkey, da 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 Two weeks later, what happens to us? Two weeks later, we got all the uproars going on. The, the, they go into the temple, all this different type of stuff going on. The things are happening in real time. So he said, well, make sure, I, get, I said, I said, Doc, they gave him a three book deal. He said, Bloomer, you know, this is the other publicist. He said, Bloomer, you never agreed to a three book deal. Now under my breath, I'm saying, why not? But anyway, you never agree because other things might happen, blah, blah, blah. I said, what well, other they I said, but the, so I told him, I said, the book deal that we agreed to is a book, three book deal with a first a, 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 a writer's refusal. So as, so if you decided tomorrow that you wanted to do a book on relationships, uh, you would have to go to that publisher and say, I'm going to do another book on relationship. Do you want to do this? And if he says no, then you can go to the other publisher. We're not stupid. We've been doing this for how long? Forever. <laughs> so uh, this, this is amazing. So now somebody passes away. You had to go down to Pittsburgh. I said, you're in Pittsburgh. Let's call the publisher. So, and then I'm in Africa. This is my first time talking to you then. And you can pick up the story from here on now. I said, the deal is what? The deal is done. The deal is uh, done. Bishop, I, I, I went there and uh, sat down, talked with him. Um, he pulled his, um, his Bob and he pulled his daughter in and we talked and he said, I need my daughter to hear what you have to say. And so I, I talked and, and she, she said, uh, she says, I see why this has to be a three book deal. And so we, we do the deal. I am, um, he, after the deal is over, he gives me a tour uh, of, of, of the publishing house. After that, then I'm getting ready to go. And I said, you know what? I said, I need to be able to reach out to my, um, my people on Instagram and just let them know that a deal has been done. Everything is good. He said, why don't you, now this is him. He says, why don't you come in? He says, and what I'm going to do, he says, I'll talk on, on the camera with you and let them know that all of it is done. So we are on Instagram live while me and Bob Whitaker are sitting there talking about this book deal. And he is, as, he is more excited than I am because now he's saying that there are things that I have brought up, which is the other part that we didn't talk about, but there are things that I brought up that nobody has ever seen in the Bible. Nobody has ever written about them. And as a result, he says, listen, we have got to have the exclusive on this. So Bishop, this is nothing more than just, I would say the favor of God uh, that is happening. And as we continue to teach God's people, whether they sow or not, it doesn't mean that the atmosphere is not continuing to be blessed. Now I gotta tell, I gotta go back and, 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 and talk to you about something. Uh, when we came there with Bernard Jordan and we came there with Bernard Jordan and we finished that Taroma piece there, what's called? You had me to come back one night and mm -hmm. I came prepared to teach, but the atmosphere was so charged, I started preaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? When the service was over that night, I was standing in the back of the room, your mother comes into the room and we got to give her 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 props. You got to give her props. Your mother came into the room and people was back there. I was getting ready to leave and she walked into the room and she said, it was good service tonight. She, she said, now this is after we had eight in the back room. Remember the, whole, the, the Holy Ghost had fell after and they was doing the altar work. So she comes to the back room, your back room. And she said, she walked in and she said, you too. She stuck her head like that. She said, she said, um, I'm telling you, you too. So I'm trying to figure out what the you too, what the you too is. She said, what, how, what, what my son does and what you do on, on warfare, you two together. She said, listen, people ain't gonna like this, but don't let nobody come between this. You too, I'm telling you what God is gonna do. That was the prophecy. It was to this particular program. <laughs> We weren't doing no warfare ecology then. We weren't doing no what you call nothing. And then when me and you started, the first week we started was you, me, and we had King on and said, you said, you know, Bloomer, uh, me and you need to ride this together. 
let's 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 rock this together and see how I said fine let's 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 roll because I knew if you was going to talk about uh, eschatology I wasn't going to be talking mm-hmm. one of the things I don't do I don't talk in areas that I don't know what I'm talking about I, I, I I'm uh, when you come for wisdom you come with ears and not lips but you got to give her her props on that you got to give all props on that that this was the season and this was the time for these two anointings to come together. When I released the book, Witchcraft in the Pews, this is the new one that's out now. This is the new ones that are out now, Witchcraft in the Pews. I got it in my hand. Um, the two books together. It was supposed to be released on the April the 27th. It didn't make its release date because they had printed 10,000 books, but it went into 40,000 in pre-sales. So we did not have the, so they pushed it back to May the something and we didn't meet that, what you call it. So if you look at the bottom of a what you call it, and this is what's going to happen to eschatology. I'm telling you, Witchcraft in the Pews is a time bestseller. Look what happened to the book again. This is a book, best-selling wow. author. I got a high seller on, on the witch call that brings you back on the bestsellers list. After 25 years, God is doing this thing in a miraculous way. And I'm going to tell you this, outside of, outside of T.D. Jakes, uh, what's the pastor who passed away? Uh, Faith Dome, Frederick K. Price, T.D. Jakes, Frederick K. Price, Juanita Bynum, Miles Monroe, George Bloomer, no other preacher that I found, African-American colored, has received a three book deal and don't even have the first book. And they do that because they know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. They've been doing it for 50 years. Mm-hmm. You're in the five top authors that at day one, the publishing houses locked them in to several book deals. That's God. And that anointing that is on us today, that anointing is on every person who continues to watch. I'm telling you, the body that you sow is not the body that you raise up. Oh, that is true. That is true. The people of God have got to see that there there are miracles that are happening and they are manifesting so quickly until, and I want everybody to hear what I'm getting ready to say. A miracle can happen so quick until you don't recognize it's a miracle. A mir- God can work a miracle so quick until you don't even recognize that a miracle just happened. You almost have to think backwards in order to, re- to realize, wait a minute, what just happened? A miracle just happened. The favor of God was just released. And I'm telling you right now, I went to, I went to Pittsburgh for my friend's funeral and Bishop Bloomer, because I told Bishop Bloomer, I can't be on Warfare Ecology last week because they needed me at the funeral early. He says, while you are there, he says, because we had already talked to him on the phone. He says, while you're there, he says, y'all gotta go ahead and get together and talk. And and by the time I got in there, he was like, everything we got now is yours. He says, he said, just- I know how it goes. I know how it goes. It, it just, it was, it was insane. It was insane. And so now uh, I would challenge, I would challenge each individual right now that whatever it is that you're believing God for, understand something, that God now is moving in such a favor that all you've got to do is have faith and step in it. You have to have faith for favor. Mm. You have to have faith for favor. You got to have faith for favor. When you walk in, you got to have faith that God is going to give you favor in the place that you're walking in. You can't walk in there timid, insecure, and 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 feeling like and operating in a, in a spirit of doubt. God does not give us that spirit of fear. You have to have faith for favor. And as you're moving in that kind of favor, you'll see the favor of God manifest within your life. You will see the favor of God manifest within your life. And I'm telling you right now, you tr- you trust God. You trust God. Just like what uh, God is doing with Bishop, with witchcraft and abuse, just what the Lord is doing with me concerning eschatology, just what the Lord is doing with me concerning this newfound area that we haven't even addressed, that ultimately is in the vein um, of spiritual warfare as well. 
that there, you have to look at the fact of what God is, what God is doing. This is what God is doing. This is what God is doing. God gives men the ability to open doors for you to walk through for there to be favor in that room. You better hear what I'm telling you. There were the relationships that God gives you. The relationships that God gives you are not just normal relationships. There are signed, assigned relationships that are to cause you to walk into vision, favor, promise, and prophecy. The, those, that's what the, the Bible teaches us that people are doors. Jesus said, I am the door. I'm not taking you to the door. He says, I am the door. He said, I will cause men to give into your bosom. He will cause men to give into your bosom. And we keep thinking that men are going to give us a check. Sometimes men will give you a door where the check comes. Woo, woo, woo. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's it the is truth. The and they missing it because they're looking for a check. Woo. The, the kind of check that you're looking for, you don't know those kinds of people. Because, because God is putting zeros behind them first digits that are so big. To, in order to finance vision and, and things that you've got to do because our heart is in the right place of serving people. You're talking about Bishop Bloomer who, um, who, who is now serving these families. He says, I, I've made a promise to these families. You've got publishers that are saying, you know what, I'll match it. Th this is where we are right now, people of God. That same Bob Whitaker, when we were, same Bob Whitaker, let's say 15 years ago, uh, um, I went to... Um, Tanzania and I was moved so I wanted to dig wells came back and told Bob Whitaker Bob Whitaker committed to build to, to dig in a hundred wells and it was five thousand dollars a well so that's a half a million dollars that he sold into the, the the heartbeat the passion behind that and so when you start talking about pumping the water and something and then after three or four years, snakes and uh, what they call grass eaters, grass grass choppers, which is a huge rats, gets into it and contaminates it. So we needed to put filters inside those inside those wells to keep the things going. You know, Kevin, we don't we get around these guys. They talk about going playing golf and and mm -hmm. and and some of them are going to the hookah bar to smoke a, a flavored smoke and crap. We we preachers, real preachers who are focusing on ministry. And uh, this project that we got going in 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 Nigeria, Ghana, I'm not I'm a Guyana, Nigeria, and Jamaica. Those three things in the, in, in the next segments that we're going to be doing, I'm going to be focusing primarily on Jamaica after I get this 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 thing done. This is real ministry for me, and meeting the needs of God's people is real. And we just needed a day or two or three to really move the people to get that passion back in their heart so that they could be a blessing to others. And the church have t taught us how to hoard and to pull to ourselves. But this day is the day that we're gonna bless people who are less fortunate than us. And it's, 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 it's a major thing. I do wanna say this openly and publicly that uh, the, the Lord is working with you and on you. So still keep on writing that book on relationship, whatever you're doing and put it over to other publishers. And you know, I got five publishers. Because mm -hmm. when you get once you get past 37 and you go to the age 40, I know people say legacy starts at 70. That's not true. Not true for white people. OK, mm -hmm. not true for the Jews. OK, and definitely not true for the Indians. The Indians, they started right at about 30. You know, they they graduate from school at 12. They become doctors at 22 years old. You know, mm -hmm. and so um, this is this, this is your legacy years and you're going to lead back teachings like Spurgeon's and whatever. Witchcraft in the Pews is a 25 year book that's put out again, new information in here, new revelation that God gave me that I can prove through scripture that I never saw before. I didn't see 10 years ago and a hardback again. You know what a hardback is? Oh yeah, and they told me yours is coming out in the hard day. And so that's that's do you know what that is? This is this is crazy. Eschatology is about to take over, and it's happening in real time. And when you start dealing with the war chess, 
Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Uh, as you're sowing, you see today, you know I need to raise 4,000. Uh, we need to raise 4,000 uh, to do this. Also, I want you to continue those of you that are committed to sowing your seed on Tuesday night into the eschatology pool. You really, really need to begin to sow. You want to be a part of the journey that Dr. Kevin Williams is on. Help with the seeds that you're sowing. You will be a part of the benefits that is happening. He's got to have staff writers and people that's got to help him with research and pull things together. And so your seed is very, very needed. Uh, let's do our double seed now. Dollar sign Bishop George G. Bloomer. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You can sow directly to Dr. Kevin Williams. Dr. Kevin A. Williams, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Well, uh, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, that's Cash App, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact, double the impact. Sow your seed. Those of you that are sowing seed uh, for the, for the, uh, for the uh, four thousands that, that's going to be matched, when you sow that seed, place up under it the double. Put up into the double. You can put Africa, put it up under the double. Kevin is my brother. If you sow it that way, he, he knows how to sow into us. He knows what to do. Have no fear. Let's do this in Jesus' name. Now let's get a little bit of work uh, eschatology in there. And let's hear a secret or two that's coming out that we don't know about yet. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bishop, I am on I am on day 38 of my fast. I haven't eaten, <laughs> eaten, wow. I haven't eaten anything since April the 25th. I'm able to eat the first time this coming Friday, I've wow. 40 some pounds. Uh, and uh, right now I am just, I have nothing but all I got is information. That's all I got. That's all I got is information. And so uh, I, 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 everybody that is watching, I need you to start looking at some things that's taking place. Um, um, uh, Vanetta, um, Lord have mercy. I keep messing it up. Vanita, Vanita. That's Vanita, right? Right. All right, good. All right, Vanita. All right. So, Vanita, if you can find it, if you would look at uh, on Sunday, Sunday, the Jerusalem Post, uh, it was in the Jerusalem Post on Sunday uh, to find a headline um, that talks about um, uh, the, the conversations from the Gaza situation between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. Um, uh, could lead to a peace treaty. So mm. if you would, if you would, um, and that was Sunday, take a look at that. All right. So for those that are not aware of what I'm talking about, <clears throat> I want you to see something right now that the Daniel 9 and 27 is really what everything is hovering around. Everything that you see in Israel right now everything that you see in the Gaza situation, everything that you see with the Palestinians, everything you see with the conflict, everything that you see with even our own government. If you think about it, everything is still circling around this Israel conversation. And the reason being it is because we are in the place in history, we're in the place in history that things are manifesting very quickly. Um, and so, Evelyn, first of all, how are you, sweetheart? I'm doing fine, sir, and welcome back. Thank you so much. I missed you. We missed you, too. <laughs> so, so if you, Evelyn, if you would go to Daniel 9 and 27, I want you to go there and uh, read that for, uh, for us, please. And it reads thus, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. All right. Now that first part says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That covenant that he's going to confirm, which is a peace treaty that he is going to do for one week, that one week is a week of years. So it's seven years. It's not a week of days. It's a week of years. So this is what we call the final seven years. 
when you hear that conversation, the final seven years, and people keep saying that that's a seven year tribulation period. Again, it is not a seven year tribulation period, but it is a final seven years. There's a three and a half year tribulation period within that seven years. And that is the last, the tribulation period is the last part of those seven years, which is three and a half years. All right. And so this tribulation period that's going to happen and what we're talking about right now is what um, I've asked uh, for them to look at when it comes to uh, uh, the, the Jerusalem post on Sunday. This is a major conversation. Now, the thing that I, I need you to look at, there we are. Can Gaza talks lead to Israeli and Palestinian negotiations? What are the negotiations about? If they can negotiate and get certain things done, and what is it about? It is about the area that the, uh, the conversation is about the area that is the, that is a major conflict right now when it comes to um, this peace agreement. And so we, we know, according to Genesis, the 15th chapter and the 18th verse, we know where the promised land is. But now what we've got to do is look at the fact that the news that the, this was Sunday, people of God, this was Sunday. This was two days ago. And now what they are putting here online is actually what we read in Daniel 9 and 27. They're, they're, they're looking at the cusp of that level of negotiation. All right. And so now in doing so, we have to make sure that we look at this because in doing so, then that puts us the moment that this peace treaty is done, the moment that this peace treaty is done. It's not just going to be done with Israel and the Palestinians. Israel and the Palestinians are going to be in it, but it is going to be, the scripture says, that it's going to be done with many. It's going to be done with many. Those that are not aware, um, in, the, um, in the Jerusalem post for today, for those of you that, that could pull up, uh, you could pull it up online, in the Jerusalem post today, uh, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, who just signed um, the Abraham Accord with Israel. They just signed the Abraham Accord with Israel. Even though they have rebuked some things that Israel has done, we still have to look at the fact that they said that they're still, um, they're still in agreement concerning Israel. What is that saying? That says that when this agreement is done, people like or groups like the UAE, People, groups like that, Israel and UAE signed double taxation prevention um, agreement. Please understand, we are in, we're in this place right now. Now, also what that says to us is this, is that we're somewhere, somewhere between now, either before uh, the peace agreement or right after the peace agreement, um, we're going to have the Third World War. Bottom line. I, I, no, I, I just can't even say that sweetly because it's just that's where we are that's where we are all right now please understand that 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 third world war that third world war that is going to take place that third world war is going to take place and we find that in daniel i'm sorry we find that in revelations the ninth chapter in fact uh revelation 9 and 13 and we'll go there just for a bit because i want to there's a couple of things that, that i want to cover uh so let's go to Revelations 9. Hallelujah. Revelations 9 and verse uh, 13. And we're going to go uh, to verse uh, 21. I want to touch that. And then I want to deal with then after that, I'm going to deal with Revelations 10 because I'm gonna show you where that is in scripture and give you some level of confirmation for it. So if you would, uh, Evelyn, read for me, uh, Revelations 9 verse uh, 13 to 21, please. Yes, sir. And it reads thus, and the six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the six angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year and to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision 
and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths for their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. All right, so now let's look at this, uh, people of God. So a couple of things I want you to look at. First of all, I want you to look at verse uh, 16. Evelyn, would you read that for me real quick? And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand. And I and heard the, num the number. Mm -hmm. And the number of the army of the what? Horsemen. Of the horsemen. Were 200,000, thousand. So there's, here we got 200 million of the, uh, now watch this and the number of the army of the horsemen, which means that it's not limited, but the horsemen, the number of the army of the horsemen were 200 million. So this war then is going to include in excess of 200 million because the number of the army of the horsemen was 200,000, thousand, which is, which is 200 million. All right. So now, but I've got to move on from that because I've got to make sure that I cover uh, certain things. Now that we do that, we understand that the war is going to start um, at, at the Euphrates River because now these um, these angels, these four angels, which are demons, are going to be loosed. All right. So now let's look at this. I want you to look now at the next stage. The next stage is Revelations 10. And this is very, very key. Because Revelations 10 now reveals to us the announcement of the tribulation period. Revelations 10 reveals to us the announcement of the tribulation period. Now, because it reveals to us the announcement of the tribulation period, and I'll explain that in just a second, but because it reveals to us the announcement of the tribulation period, this is where, um, as eschatologists, we have the argument of that this third world war can happen either before or after the peace treaty because they're all right there stuck together. So now, but when you look at Revelations 10, you don't initially see it, but I will show you. All right. So, Evelyn, I want you to go to Revelations, the 10th chapter, start at the first verse for me and, and let's break it down from there. Yes, sir. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. All right, now I'm going to tell you all in just a minute who this angel is, and I'll prove who this angel is, because we're going, we know the name of this angel. I'll prove to you who this angel is. Go ahead, in verse 2. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. Go ahead. And cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. All right, now watch this. Watch this, guys. All right, so... Here it is in the second verse. He said that he had um, in his hand a little book open and set in his right. Uh, uh, and watch this. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left uh, foot upon the earth and cried with a loud voice as the lion uh, as a lion roareth. Watch this. And seven thunders responded. Very, very important. Very, very important. I want you to, uh, Evelyn, go to verse uh, five and go to verse seven for me. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever 
who created heaven and the things that there are therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. Stop. And there should be what? Time no longer. There should be time no longer. That word time is the Greek word chronos, but it also means, watch this, it also means delay. It also means delay. If you look up the Greek de definition and description of the word chronos, what that means is delay. So what does that say? And time, uh, and watch this, and there should be delay no longer. Mm. So if it means delay no longer, then that means now that what you're getting ready to experience is the tribulation period, all right? I want you to read the sixth verse, and then we're going to read the seventh verse. Uh, do that again for me, Evelyn. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that heareth that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. All right, there'll be time no longer. This is the tribulation period that is now being introduced. Go ahead to the seventh verse. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants and prophets. Now watch, watch what he says. Read that again, Evelyn. Very important, guys. Let's take a look at it. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants and prophets. Now I want y'all to think about this. I want you to look at the fact that in verse nine and 13, the sixth angel sounded. The seventh angel does not sound to Revelations 11 and, and 11 and 15. He, they're talking about when the seventh angel sound, but he has not sounded yet. Why? Because chapter 10 is revealing that this angel has put one foot on the sea, one foot on the earth and said, time shall be what? Delayed no longer. So now we have now this tribulation period that is coming up because now it is that three and a half years. Now let's take a look at this because this angel that has now announced that Read that, read that seventh verse again, Evelyn, then we're going to go on down because I've, I've decided just to read all 11 because sometimes people think that you're skipping scriptures because you're scared of them and we're not. So go ahead and read the seventh verse and then we'll go on down. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants and prophets. All right. So he said the seventh angel, when he sounds... When he sound, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery, watch this, of God should be finished mm -hmm. as he's declared it to his servants, the prophet. So now he's telling us what's going to happen when the seventh angel sounded and everything will be finished. But we ain't there yet because we're between six and seven. Now go, go to verse um, eight because we're going to talk about now. We're going to talk. I, I'll explain it. Go ahead and verse eight, verse eight through 11. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. All right, now let's take a look at this, guys. The first thing we have to do is, is when we're looking at a book, we're talking about a book. All right. We're talking about a book. And what we're dealing with is Revelation. He says, go take the book out of his hand. I was about to call the angel's name, but we'll deal with it in a second. He said, go take the book out of his hand. When you take the book out of his hand, he says, it's going to be sweet in your mouth. It's going to be bitter to your stomach, which means that the environment that the people are going to be in is going to seem to be sweet because the Antichrist is going to make it look like everything is wonderful. He said, but ultimately it's going to be bitter because it's going to hurt because at that point, people are going to have the revelation that they made some choices that they should not have made. And now they have fallen right into the hands of the 
influence of what the Antichrist is doing. Now, let's look at this because what we are seeing in verse one and verse two and verse six and verse seven, we have seen that before in Daniel 12. So now, Evelyn, I want you to go to Daniel 12. Let's go to Daniel 12. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Good. Then 12th chapter. Let's start at the first verse and let's, let's go on down. We'll just break it on down. We ain't scared of no scriptures. Yes, sir. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered and everyone that shall be found written in the book. Now let's break that scripture down. Evelyn, let's take a look at it. I want you to read yes, it slow so I can interrupt you. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Stop. Now we know the angel's name and I'll prove because the, the similarities are exact. All right. But now we know the angel's name in Revelation, the 10th chapter, because the Bible says this angel put one foot on water, one foot on land and said, time shall be delayed no longer. All right, let's read this again. And I'll, I'll, we'll prove that it's Michael. And we'll prove that what Daniel saw is the same thing that, that John saw. And we know that to happen because we've confirmed that several times in different areas of scripture. Let's read it again, starting at, at the beginning, Evelyn. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. All right, now stop. Now, who is he talking to? He's not talking to the body of Christ. He's talking to Daniel. And when he's talking to Daniel, what did he say? He's talking about Daniel's people. Who is Daniel's people? Thy people. It's Israel. Israel. That's who it is. So now let's look at it. He says here in this, he says, um, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there, uh, uh, there was a nation even at the same time. We've seen that same thing. We've seen that same thing in Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 21st and the 22nd verse. Would you, we're going to just put our little finger right there. Would you go to Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22? Let's take a look at it. Matthew 24. Yes, ma'am. Matthew 24, um, I believe is verse 21 and 22 is what I want. Yes, sir. And it reads thus. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, Evelyn, go back because now what, no, before you go back, I want you to read that 21st verse again. Let's read that 21st verse again. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. All right, now go to Daniel 12 and one. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. What Jesus said is the same thing that Daniel said in Daniel 12 and one. Let's go now, watch this. And, and now, we're, now let's go to verse two, go ahead. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now stop. Let's look at the fact of what happens, all right? Because this is where some eschatologists get confused and they think that what's happening in Daniel 1 and Daniel 2 is chronological order. No, it's not. And we prove that later on in the scripture, all right? Because and this is why one of the, uh, one of the uh, major arguments concerning the rapture being at the end and not at the beginning when everybody's saying that we're not gonna be here, this is one of the scriptures that's got has people confused because they're thinking that everything is in chronological order, not considering the fact that by the time you get to the seventh and the eighth verse, it reveals mm. to you that you have to go back because their space is missing. Mm. 
We're not scared of no scriptures, guys. We're not scared of no scriptures. So let's take a look at it because this is our reality. If it's right, it's just right. And we have to prove that it's right. To, to, be, to be in eschatology, you have to be able to look at it and prove what you are saying. If you can't prove what you're saying, it's just your opinion. When you prove what you're saying, it's God's word. Amen. That's what the deal is. And we prove what we're saying. All right. So now I want you to take a look at that again, because some people are going to miss it. So, Evelyn, I want you to start reading at um, in the middle, anywhere in the middle of that first verse, because I want to get the, 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 the B and the C clause of the verse. So go ahead and read that for me, please. And there should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. He's talking about people that the Jewish people, everyone that is written in the book, because there is a remember there is an assignment because the scripture talks about what it talks about. John said, I saw 144,000. They were numbered. Everyone that is written in the book. And so I got a revelation for that, but I'll talk about that later. Now go to the second verse because there's a period there. Now let's go to the second verse because what John is, what, what Daniel is seeing, he is skipping and seeing several different things. Go to the second verse, watch. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Uh-huh. And they said, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. All right. So now let's look at this. He's given them now the fact of the tribulation period. Then he tells them, watch this, the end of the tribulation period. He shows the beginning. He shows the end. Don't worry. I'll prove it. Go ahead and read on. <laughs> but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Go ahead. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for time, times and an half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. All right, now watch, what does he do? He says, when is this going to happen? Now he goes back and he fills it in. And he says, when all of these things shall be finished, the seventh verse now reveals the gap between verse one and verse two. Let's take a look at it, guys. Now let's look at it. So what does he say? Evelyn, I want you to read that seventh verse again because we want to make sure that we're seeing something that we saw in Revelation, the 10th chapter. Let's take a look at it. It says, and I heard the man. Go ahead and read that. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven. Stop right there. He held up his what? His right hand and his left hand. And that the heaven. same thing that happened in, in, in Revelation, the 10th chapter, when he held up his hand and said, time shall be no more, or a, a delay no more. Yes. Right hand and left hand, same thing. So now we understand where we are. This is Michael that we're dealing with. Michael, what we're dealing with in Daniel 12 is what John was dealing with in, De in, in Revelation, the 10th chapter. All right, so go ahead and read on. And swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. All right, and times, he... times, and a half. What is that? Three and a half years. Time is one year, time is two years, half is a half a year. Three and a half years. Go ahead. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now he's revealing all these things shall be finished. All these things shall be finished. Go ahead, because they think I'm scared of these scriptures. Go ahead and read, Evelyn. And I heard but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Now the words are closed up and, and, and sealed to the time of the end. I've got to move very quickly because I just looked at my time, all right? So now let's look at this, guys. 
All right. So now what we what the scripture says is that there's going to be three and a half years. What we look at in Daniel, the ninth chapter, the 27th verse is that it is going to be in the middle of the week, which is of the of a uh, seven week year, which is three and a half years. We go to Daniel um, nine and twenty five. And you know what it tells us? Three and a half years. Uh, I just I've got to go ahead and deal with that so that everybody gets it, because somebody's probably watching us for the first time and is in shock. That in turn, the tribulation is going to be three and a half years, and they're in shock that we're going to be here. And I need you to look at those scriptures and not look at what people are saying. Would you go to Daniel 9 and 25 real quick and give me that for me, please? And it reads. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry Daniel 7 and 25. That's my Daniel, mistake. Daniel 7. 7 and 25. Yes, ma'am. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. All right, so that's three and a half years. Go to Revelations 13 and five. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. How long is 42 months? Three and a half years. Let's go to Revelations 12 and 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. A thousand two hundred three score days. So now we're dealing with it. Now let's go to Revelations 11. Yep. Let's go to Revelations 11, and I want verse 3, I think. Yeah. Verse 3, and it reads, mm -hmm. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Three and a half years. 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 Amen. All right. Now, after, after we deal with Revelations 10, after we deal with Revelations 10, that's when 11 reveals to us that the temple has already been built. And that's why he, he, tells, he tells it, go to Revelations, uh, Revelations 11 and verses 1 and 2. Would you read that for me, please? And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. He said forty and two months. Let's, let's take a look at this because here it is, guys, that what he said, he says, he says, I need you to rise and measure what? The temple of God. So at, at when at 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 Chapter 11, verse 1, it has already been built, which means that, that in chapter 10, when the tribulation period is initiated, this thing is already built. So it was built when? Right after the agreement. This is amazing. Right after the agreement, the peace agreement that we talk about in Daniel, the ninth chapter, the 27th verse. And now, two days ago, they're talking about the Palestinians and Israel having a conversation concerning negotiations of peace two days ago. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that the word of God is not a prophetic book and it is, manifest, it is manifesting right in front of us. And the question is. What position are you as a believer going to put yourself in at, at, at when it comes to these kind of things? Are you going to operate as church as usual? Or now is it time to operate within the full calling of God and also prepare yourself, not only for the work of the ministry, but also everything when it comes to the infrastructure that it's going to take? Mm -hmm. And that's why your war chest can't just have money. Your war chest has got to have influence. Your war chest has got to have connections. Your war chest has got to have so much in it. It's not just one thing. 
This is why it is so important when we're dealing with the details of scripture. Um, Lord have mercy, Bishop, it's six o'clock. Um, never enough time. But I want to ask a question and I want you to take a, a, and just go back in the teachings for a few moments. In Revelation chapter number 10, uh, verses one on starts, opens up. Um, I want to, I want to uh, touch on symbols because I do a lot on symbols in, warf in warfare ecology. So um, the, the angel is standing and uh, he, uh, let's go to it. Evelyn, the Revelations 10, verse number one. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. Symbol, go ahead. And a rainbow was upon his head. Symbol. And his face was as it were the sun. Symbol. And his feet as pillars of fire. Symbol, uh-huh. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he Literal. set his right foot. Literal. Okay. Uh -huh. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Symbol, symbol, uh-huh. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And, and when he had cried. And cried with a loud voice as when, as when a lion roars. And we know that when a lion roars in the jungle, it's the set order. Everything, everything that was moving, everything stops and checks out where they're at. Hoping that they're not, hoping that the lion is not in the tall grass getting ready to pounce on them. So this is the announcement of war. We get it. So um, can you do some of the um some of the symbols of the text? All right, so um and I saw an um, uh, um you know what, Evelyn, go ahead and read, and then I I'll, I'll stop you as usual. Yes, sir. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud. All right, now he's clothed with a cloud. He's clothed with a cloud. He's clothed with the cloud. He's clothed with the myth mystery of God because now it's getting ready to be manifested. Go ahead. Mm, 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 and mm, a mm. rainbow was upon his head. All right, because now the word rainbow represents covenant because covenant is always connected to rainbow. Go ahead. Have you and been reading face. my book? <laughs> 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 Woo! Shatanamasa. Go ahead, Kevin. His face, and his face was as it were the sun. All right, because that's being in the face of God. It is a manifestation of God's brightness, of God's revelation, of God's understanding. Go ahead. And his feet as pillars of fire. Okay, it is, it is where God has walked in truth. It is where uh, now Michael has had to walk in truth because we also see the fact that that happens in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, when, 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 when Lucifer is being checked because he understands the pillars of fire and, he, uh, and walking in that fire. Go ahead. Mm. And he had in his hand a little book open. All right, and that, and that book represents the understanding of prophetic understandings and knowledge and mystery because we saw the fact that the, the scripture says earlier who was worthy to open up the book and the lamb had to come and bring the book because it deals with revelation. Go ahead. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. All right, because God is God is ruler over both. And what you're dealing with is seas are still territory. Because when you're dealing with earth and you're dealing with sea, sea is still territory. And that's why when you go, if there is a boat and it goes into a certain part of the sea, now you're going into certain territory. No different than if you go in a certain part of the air, they will say that now you're in our airspace because it is territory. All right. It, it, how many more symbols do you want me to do, Bishop? We can just keep going. We can go till tomorrow. No. <laughs> I just wanted, I just, <laughs> I just wanted those first few uh, to be done masterfully um, because I don't want to take you off the topic. A week from now, we're going to go into, we, no, but that, 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 that's fantastic. I wanted the, I wanted to lead up from um, um, him showing up. I wanted to uh, um, show the domain, the dominion, he giving us power over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, his land is on his feet, the blah, the clouds, blah, 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 blah. The, the, the walking through the, the through, through the stones of fire, purifying the truth and all that, that this particular angel had to walk the walk of, of Christ in order to give us that which the Lord has for. I just wanted some of those symbols, I'm gonna be doing a teaching on it. I just wanted to get your idea 
on what those um what those uh, symbols was. What was the last symbol on that, uh, um, Evelyn? And, uh, when he was explaining the foot upon the sea, the right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. Yeah, and the other one is what is one that comes. I don't think it's, I think that it, at the ends it doesn't it. Um, yes, sir. Five with a loud voice. Um, uh, um, as a lion roareth. All right, go oh, ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As a That's lion so true. I'm roar. Sorry. But you know, yeah. Go ahead. Let me hear your revelation on that. All right. So if okay, Evelyn, you got to read it, and then I'll explain it. Okay. And cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. All right. So a cry is a herald. It's, it's a declaration in an atmosphere because now he has the authority to initiate something, all right? So when he is crying with a loud voice, he says, um, when a lion roared and when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices because now he has the authority to make this declaration. And now these seven thunders now are speaking and, 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 and the scripture says, and John could not write what the seven thunders said. Correct. But ultimately, what we do know is this, is that the seven thunders, the result of the seven thunders is the tribulation period manifesting in this atmosphere. So we know the result. We just don't know what they said because there are things, there are details in there that God did not want revealed at the time because it probably was too specific or too exact. So do you think those, re re remember now there is, the time when men are going to and fro and technology is coming into place and knowledge is increasing. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that those seven thunders that John did not write are things that we might not find out about. I think that there are people who know what those seven thunders are. I think in this season in the time of, in, of, of, of knowledge increasing. I, I agree. I think that at the time he could not write it. And because again, it would be too exact for our time because, because the word of God, when it comes to eschatology, it is supposed to be written in a mystery. Yes. But this would not have been mystery. This would have been exact because the thunders said it. That's, that's the reason why when we, when she started reading the witch girl, I said, uh, um, um, you know, this is a, uh, a metaphor or, or, or type or symbol. And she went symbol, 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 symbol. Then when we got to the book, I said literal. Mm -hmm. But uh, but mystery, literal, but mysterious. There, there, uh -huh. there's, there's a mystery to it, but the writings of the things inside that book are not metaphoric. Exactly. They're the sayings of Christ, and those sayings are true. It's 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 I, I believe uh, you know, preachers say in their humble opinion when they're not humble. But I, but I believe that uh, there's secrets in that book that uh, uh, that is the mystery is, is that is the mystery of prophecy. They, you know, they say people talk about prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. The Bible says that the spirit of, of prophecy is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's that's a lot to unpack. But I believe that some things that those writers did not write because there, there wasn't, it was too advanced in technology, uh, uh, a helicopter, a, a iPhone, a, a Zoom, what, what, what have you. I believe that there are men that are on the face of the earth right now who spend enough time in scripture that God whispers to them the utterances of the seven thunders. Mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that. Just like God has revealed unto you this eschatology piece, he revealed unto uh, 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 Kenneth Hagin uh, the faith thing and all Roberts, the mystery of healing. I believe that as time begins to increase and unfold, we're going, I, I keep on saying, the new voices are coming forth, but new voices won't be new bodies. You've been around for how many years? How long you been around? Um, 53, Bishop. Right, you've been around, and how long you been preaching? I've been preaching since I was 15. Right, I was preaching since I was 17. But we're saying stuff now that's bringing a whole new, a new era, new voice, old vessels.
The new voice is not new people. And so I wanted to go from the first part of the symbol to all the way back up to where, to, to where he's actually um, speaking. I thought that um, the piece that you did on the cry that, 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 that was powerful. I do know, uh, metaphorically speaking, that when a lion, they say the best thing that can happen to you in the jungle is for a lion to roar because you know where he is. Mm -hmm. And if he's not roaring, then he is hunting. When an angel hollers or when an angel makes a declaration, there must be a response. There must be a response. And the Bible says in Isaiah, the sixth chapter, and one angel said, holy, and another angel responded, holy, and another angel responded, holy. And the scripture says, and the doorpost shifted. Because there must be a response when an angel makes a declaration or cries out of his mouth because he's under assignment by God. And what by, because he's under assignment by God, the earth has to shift. And the details of the seven thunders, and we can talk about that at some point, because, of course, I don't even, I don't know what, I, 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 all I can say is this, is that God recently gave me, as, as you know, and I know, and, and the publisher knows, but nobody else knows, that God recently gave me something that there has not been one book written about it. Nobody has ever said it even existed. And as many times if, if, as everybody has read the word of God, nobody has found this particular thing that now is a three book deal because nobody has ever discussed it. It is a new area when it comes to Christianity and the word of God, period. It's an utterance of one of the thunders. And remember, it has to happen. It has to happen in the last days. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry yeah. for taking us off that, but that's that's why I wanted to go for a moment. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. But I wish I wish you were not online because I promise you, I want to go somewhere with you. You know, in this conversation. <laughs> huh. I got a thousand scriptures in my head. Woo! Yeah, but I don't want I don't want it to be given away for free. Oh no, we're before the book that. comes out. Oh no, we're not doing that. They got to be in the book. They got to be in the book. Wow. Yeah, but the the uh, uh, the, the 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 it it says that it says that electricity travels through the cloud, and then the thunder comes. So you can tell that. If you drive in your car and it's lightning, then a few minutes later, the, th the, the thunder. I believe that what God has done for the 36 or 37, 38 days was send the lightning. When that is over and you are able to say, I hunger and you eat and which call it, then the thunder is going to start. I believe that. Going to something. Kevin, we going into something. I believe that. Going into something that we have not. Uh, remember, rem remember the, the, the preacher that came up out of, out of West Virginia. Just, 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 just one year sitting in the rafters at, uh, uh, at uh, Azusa in the Maybe Center as a guest to Sarah Power Jordan. She then asks Carlton, can you let my friend come down and sit next to me? She then asks Carlton, can you let my friend pray and close the prayer, cl close the service? He gets up to close the service and the service can't close. Next year, they bring him back as a speaker and that's the end of it. I'm telling you from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, when I was in that building during the master class, I felt, I, and the whole ride home, I told everybody that was with me, I said, I'm telling you, something is on this joker. That is, I, I'm telling you, y'all say whatever you want to say, I'm telling you what is about to happen because that's my gift. My gift in my war chest, it's connections. Mm -hmm. It's influence. Some dollars in there. It's favor. And you said something today that's powerful. You have to have faith for the favor that's coming. Because when God says, give it all, you got to give it all. Mm -hmm. But I saw something that night. And then we went behind that curtain. 
and went down the line behind the, the behind the curtains. Now, I I, I I have times when people might take me wrong because they're trying to show me something, and then and I'm not impressed by it. And it's not that I'm arrogant; it's just that I've seen so much. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen a lot, so you're like, yeah, and you're trying to accommodate. But how long was I behind that curtain? I couldn't come out from behind the curtain. You was there. Yeah, this, this, this is what's about to happen right now. We, about, we are about to see what is behind the veil. Preparing God's people for this particular time. That night was, it, and you know, and, and while I was up talking, I was up talking, I said, I can't, I can't penetrate the atmosphere. I know, I, I know stuff, so I'll just talk what I know. But there was no anointing there for that. Something had happened. And I'm teaching in my, um, my classes to my ministers, the principle of stall, how that a, 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 a thoroughbred is placed in the stall because of every single thing that it has. And they can't let it go loose around the, it's full. They have to hold it and get it ready for the track. And once they put it on the track and open up that sucker, that thing is gone and will not be able to catch. That's the anointing that was in that room that night. Everything is, and you have to be able to understand what, 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 what God is doing, what God is saying, how he's moving. This is our hour. This is, this is our season. And so first comes the book, then comes the deals, then comes the connection with people who are in office. Now, remember this, Kevin, this is serious. And those of you that are watching, hear this now. You know, Jesus says to his disciples, let's go over to Simon's house. And when he gets to Simon's house, Lazarus is there who he had raised from the dead. You got Mary who is serving. You got Martha who is uh, Martha who is serving, and you got Mary who is going to wash the feet of Jesus. And then you have Judas in that room, and all these people are, are are there that particular night. So you have one that is serving, one that is sitting, prepping the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's no utterance out of Judas until she breaks open that box. And when she breaks open that box and the fragrance and the aroma of something hits that room that had never hit that room before, Judas turns around and tries to talk Jesus into getting the aroma back in the box. And that's the fight that you and me have been under when this first thing started. What the heck are they talking about? What do they do? That's, that's crazy. That's not so. That's not going to bloom. Are you crazy? You know, y'all, y'all, I don't know where y'all getting this from. And then it begins to subside because they can't come up with enough biblical facts to even refute what is on the table. And that's why symbols and God's timing and national identity and all those things that make up prophecy that you do so skillfully well is very, very important. So people can't, you know, kind of corner you in the wall. This is it. We are preparing the church for its burial. That's what we're preparing the church for. That, that's what we're preparing the church for. We're preparing the church for its burial. And Mary did it so well. The Bible says early on the first part of the week came Jesus, or came the mother of Jesus and the other Mary to the tomb to anoint, embalm, anoint the body of Jesus. And he had already been resurrected. Why? Because it was done before it was supposed to be done. And this is what happens on Warfare Ecology for those of you that are watching on Tuesdays particularly. God shows us stuff before it happens and then we sit back and we see it happen. Week after week after week after week after week. And we're getting closer to this whole uh, particular thing. Down to, down to whoever had a plan to come against God or use certain instruments, whether it's vaccines or what, 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 God will reveal unto us in time what is right and what is wrong. Who the thunk that eight, nine months ago when we were talking about stuff like that, that eight, nine months later, nine, eight is new beginning and nine is birthing, that we would have a situation where Bill Gates, the guy who is responsible for backing and bringing the vaccine together and announcing to us that one is coming to all this kind of stuff 
that he would be in peril. All this has been spoken about on the, pro, on the program. Watch what he says. Watch what's, what he's doing. Watch what's behind. The, you, you said that there was a political thing that was going to happen to him. And I believe that a lot of what's going on right now, I'm, I'm sure he's done some stuff, but a lot of it is political. This whole thing is unfa- un- unfolding in real time. If you don't do nothing, call a neighbor, call a friend, tell them if you're serious about your soul salvation and your soul security, sit down, get something to write with, listen to Tuesdays and prepare yourself for the book. Cause it's about to happen. It is about to happen. And we couldn't wait for a, a whole nother year we love you to death, Stephen, but that could that one won't work. God gonna do something else. He gonna do something else. This is it. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just blown away and I'm full today. <sighs> Bishop, we 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 have we have dealt with so much, and even um, even the area where I called you in the middle of the night and I said the Lord just given me something. We were going to go to the White House. Certain people interfered with that, but if you think about it. Uh, they interfered with it because they couldn't get out of us the details because we said this is when, when you go when you go to that kind of power, you don't go there with pieces. You, the person that God spoke to has got to be there to talk. And they didn't want that. So they started talking about it. And now all you hear everywhere is about reparations. And That's this, it. That, and other, but that conversation, I need everybody to go back and look, because the time that what I said to Bishop Blumen and we were talking and we were talking in code. There was nothing about that coming forth. And all of a sudden people are like, well, where is all this conversation coming from? It is coming from something that we that, that Bishop Bloomer reached out to somebody to have a conversation with that particular White House. And that conversation was circling, but nobody had details. But you had to tell, you gotta, you, you gotta tell them that we had an appointment. We had an appointment set up. We're on our way to the White House. We decided that we weren't gonna tell anybody. Well, and, and then, Individuals wanted to know the details. I didn't know the details. I didn't know the details. I, I, I knew what you told me, but you knew the details. So I said, well, let's, let me talk to you. Talk to him. Blah, blah, blah. And when they saw that they couldn't crack you, what did they do to our appointment with the president? They shut that sucker down. They shut it down. Because it, it was going to change everything. And we was in there. We had, I, got the, I, I can have Vanita pull up the invitations that, that we we and put it online if you want to. He ain't president no more. <laughs> so it's not national security anymore. That's the that that's how we were riding. And people yes. could not in the door. Could not get it. People of God, when God gives you something, don't get don't don't Lord have mercy. Don't give pearls to swine. That's what's in my war chest. What's in my war chest is influence. A lot of it, a lot of it. And I'm not gonna be mad at Republicans or Democrats. I'm going to speak truth to power, but I want to be at the table. And when you get to the table, either you're eating or you're being eaten. Exactly. There ain't nobody eating me. So I'm, I'm, when I go there, I'm going there right. And and um, I'm gonna have her to dig through our witch calls. And one of these one of these witch calls, when you talk, I'm gonna put the screen, I'm gonna put up. We had the appointment, the, the date, everything set, security, clearances, everything going through. And what happened? And one person out of Cleveland. <laughs> one person. And, one. And, and you know what? It did, we, were, we wasn't even blocked because of the information that you had. We were blocked because we were black and some of those black guys that was around the president didn't want any other black guys around them. That's, that, that's it right there. And it could have changed it. Everybody, we could be experiencing something completely different in our. But Kevin, it still ain't. It it it, it still ain't over. It's still, it still ain't, ain't over. over. Look what the Lord has done this time around. Put us right back in the right back in the groove. We just gotta wait our time. You know, nobody wants to talk about push it too hard right now with the with the infrastructure bill going around because you need two three trillion dollars for that whole piece and stuff like that. But if they listen to the plans. <laughs> If they just listen, if, mm, mm, mm. you all, Bishop Bloomer said, well, because I, I told Bishop Bloomer the details 
And Bishop Bloomer said, I understand it, but you're going to have to explain it. Right. He, right. he said, I can't explain it. He says, I get it. He said, but I can't explain it. You're going to have to explain it. And that's the way God gave it to me. And I'm telling you now, I do not believe that God gives something for it to go to spoil. God gives something because the vision is for an appointed time. And God is going to make sure that this happens. When the president of the United States of America's son says, what's his name and how do you spell his name? Kevin Williams, how do you spell his name? And when can I talk to him? You know what time it is. Mm -hmm. because they understand this. They do. They do. They do. But we would have been, see, 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 if we'd have just splattered it all out, they would have got it done. We wouldn't have got nothing. That's mm -hmm. not God's plan. Right. Because Joseph, Joseph has got to be in the Pharaoh's house in order for things to be run correctly. For the seven years of, of, of prosperity, so that when the seven years of famine comes in, the prosperity covers the famine that you don't even know that you're in famine. Mm. We, don't we, don't we don't have to be the Pharaoh, be Joseph. But if they go back and, and, and listen, several months ago, they go back and listen how we was talking in code, mm -hmm. no mention of reparations was in the media, was in the news, none of that kind of stuff was, none of that kind of stuff was going on. And you said you will be very, very careful when we come down and talk about Bill Gates because we don't want them to snatch us off the witcher call because every time we say this so, so like that, and then, and I'm, I can pull the video up. And then you said, and we need to pray for Bill Gates because he needs mm -hmm. to watch himself because mm -hmm. of the political blah, 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 blah. And look what's happening to him when? Right, right now. now. Right now. Right this minute. It was during the time that you had, uh, disclosed to us the uh the slave patrol that's way mm -hmm. back that's like a year ago remember mm -hmm. the slave patrol we was going right uh -huh. into that whole thing how the police officer and reverend during that time the boy hadn't even been killed yet right floyd hadn't been it's so much prophecy on this thing you called me one night you said listen you got to watch this video uh for the that and you and, and how the police departments got along why the police department and it was right after that the knee was on the neck of the of the boy. This prophecy situation during this time has all right. Talking too much. Dollar sign. Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Those of you that are sowing towards the four thousand four today, I really really need your help. Put in it uh, the double. Uh, the rest, the our regular seeds that are being sown. I, Kevin, I forgot. What, what did you ask for today? Um, I did not. But people of God, 91, 33, 50, 70, 91, 121, 333. And I'm telling you right now, for those individuals, because right, right now I am 38 days into this fast. I got two more days. And this is a time, I think, an excellent time of sowing seed in that level of consecration. Because the Bible says that when Jesus fasted 40 days, he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, something is shifting in the atmosphere right now. That is Luke 4 and Matthew 4. I'm telling you right now that something is shifting in the atmosphere as we sow and we believe God and we're connecting with that level of sacrifice and consecration. And that's why that's why I, I look at as big as I usually look because I'm I'm much smaller because that's what that level of fasting and consecration does. But I'm telling you, the result of what God has mandated or over your life is getting ready to take place and happen. The details of what God is getting ready to do is getting ready to happen. I need there as a hundred people that are going to sow ninety one dollars. There's a hundred people that are going to sow ninety one dollars. One hundred people are going to sow ninety one dollars. And I want you to do that. I want you to do that right now. Whatever seed that you're going to sow. Whatever that seed is, even if it's in, the, in those increments, whatever that seed is, Dr. Wiz, all I got is a dollar. Dr. Wiz, I want to sow a thousand dollars. Whatever it may be, I want you to sow that right now. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Text Bloomer at 844-889-1559. Mail to GG Bloomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. You could put um, GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box of Givelify 
and sow your seed. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams for Cash App. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams and Zell. Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Again, that's Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. And what I want you to do is split your seed. Split your seed right now. Split your seed right now and double the impact. And let's believe God. Ecclesiastes 4 and 12, a uh, three, four court is not quickly broken. We're going to unite with you and believe God with you concerning your vision, concerning what God is doing in your life, concerning your business, concerning your business plan. Whatever that is, because the vision is for an appointed time, and in the end, it shall it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer. Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Let's go ahead and start sowing right now, people of God. Let's go ahead and start sowing right now. Um, text Bloomer at 844-889-1559. Mel, GG Bloomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Givelify, GG Bloomer Ministries, put that in the search box and let's give right now. Wow. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Again, that's Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. And as we're believing God right now, people of God, let's sow. Dr. Williams, but I don't have that so. And watch God. That's all I can say. Sow and watch God. Because as we're sowing into you, God is opening up things in different areas of our lives as well. We went in for, when you're talking about double the impact, we went in for, for one book deal and got three. And then, and then he said, and a fourth is pending because he said on the fourth book, he says, he says, I want you to just to unleash your mind. He says, and give every level of revelation in the depth that you want it. He says in that fourth book. Um, amazing. God is just amazing. And I'm telling you right now, the God that we serve and the God that you serve is exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. The God that you serve, the God that I serve, the God that we serve is the God of the promise of the promised land and the manifestation of it. The God that you serve and the God that I serve will have a conversation with you like Solomon in a dream and let you wake up in your reality. The God that you serve and the God that I serve will cause you to have a dream and drag your dream into your reality. The God that you serve and the God that I serve will take your seed and cause it to be something when it comes when it comes out. It is completely different. According to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 36th verse, the God that you serve and the God that I serve. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. Woo. <sighs> Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You know, when we called, uh, we spoke with your mom and Bernard Jordan, you and me, we're all four on the phone uh, that particular day. And uh she was speechless. What did she say after we went off the air, after we got off the phone? When we got off the phone, my mother said to me, she says, I always know when it's somebody's time. She says, and right now, she says, it's yours. She said, you, she talked to me, I'm telling you, her conversation, she said, and she told me, she says, never let anybody separate you and bloomer she said because the two of you all together and then she said something else she she said that to me in that office she said mm -mm, y'all don't do it but i mean they they what, what they can't nobody do that they can't do that <laughs> can't nobody do that but uh this is this is i got goose pimples going up the side of my i'm because you know when i give give a word i always say you know uh, I'm not a prophet, but the things I speak come out of the heart of God. I was prophesying on that stage that day when we, we turned and we faced the, 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 the chairs. And I said, I'm telling you, I didn't know about which, I, I did know that Stephen said he would, a creation house would do the book, but they wanted to do it 2022. That's too long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I didn't bring that to you. But uh, or did I tell you? Did I tell you? I had, I had, did I tell you about Stephen? You, you you mentioned a couple things to be vicious. Okay, good. All right. I'm just saying, you know, because I got oh, you know uh, uh, prophetic Alzheimer's. <laughs> I forget things. <laughs> my mother said, my mother used to say, you need to tell the truth because you'd be repeating things over and over again. So you make sure <laughs> that you remember what you'd be saying. <laughs> so yeah, but um, I'm glad I'm that was God. I'm glad we went there. And then that put us in that that took us with that didn't just lock us in the evangelical book line, that put us in the global. So we we that 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 was a God move. Uh, those of you that are watching uh, the uh, the program today, uh, you got some dreams and some visions and some aspirations and and some unctions and some prophetic forecasts that God is stirring on the inside of you. But it takes faith to execute the favor, and a lot of you don't have the faith to move into the favor that God wants to give you. And sowing seed at the end or the beginning or the middle of the program is always the way that you exercise your faith. You said something some time ago called faith. The state of faith is. Um, I'm sorry. The, it's, uh, look, give, give me one second. Yeah. Giving is the state of faith. Giving is the state of faith. Giving is the state of faith. And uh, you know, when you are, when you're standing, that's one thing. But when you're seat, seated, you are reigning. The Queen of England doesn't make proclamations standing up. She must be seated. And Christ promised that we'll be seated with him in heaven. He did it even in the temple. He said, this day the scripture shall be fulfilled and did what? Set down. I'm telling you that you are sitting at the feet of an eschatologist and a warfareologist. And we're telling you that the season is now and God is revealing things and you need to exercise your faith by giving and watch the favor of God overwhelm your life. That's all I got to say for today. Next Tuesday is going to be something else. It is. Dollar sign, Bishop George G. Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Split the seed. Wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact and double the impact. We need to set up a, 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 um, a, a, a celebration day up for Warfare Ecology and maybe just go over for, for, for Tuesday, the eschatology piece there because we've been on a year and some months we just to stop maybe next month sometime and have a Tuesday, which is a whole celebration day. Read, uh, maybe read um, a request and go back to some prayer things that we had to do and share some oppositions that we faced and, and just, just to have a nice celebration uh, day. I don't know what God is doing, where he's taking us, but I know that big things are about to happen. I'm, I, I celebrate you. I thank God that this is happening for you. Couldn't happen to a better person. I know more and more is going going to happen. Plus, we got that Sage CD coming out. Did I send you the Did I send you the music to one of them? Yes, sir. I did. And you are gonna pray and, and give us one? That's going. Then that, now that's going on Audible. So we're going. We 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 are going places. We're going places. The non singers are gonna get Grammys. Watch us. <laughs> All right, give us your closing statements for the day. It's Bible study time. People of God, uh, everything that we've said uh, to you. Hallelujah. Uh, stand on the authority of the word of God. Uh, as people have, even uh, people that were at the master's class, uh, they know what was behind that curtain because uh, I have a lot of collectibles that nobody would ever think uh, but that a person would have that confirms um, the word of God in so many different ways. Uh, we've, if you, if you, uh, want to see, go to my Instagram, um, uh, Dr. Kevin A. Williams official, and you can see me and Bob Whitaker standing right beside each other uh, with, um, and, and the deal being done. You can also see him talking uh, on that because it is just, uh, it, 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 it is, it, that we're, not, we're, not, we're not playing games. We're not playing games. What we're dealing with is nothing but truth. That's all we're dealing with. 
We're dealing with nothing but truth. And I'm telling you right now, everything that God is doing, he is doing for you as well. There is no way that you could be connected to somebody that is blessed and you turn back around and not get or walk in the blessing. So in turn, I tell everybody, that's why I'm challenging you, sow your seed, because something big is coming. Because the seed that you sow ain't going to look the same when it come out. It goes in small and comes out a tree. It goes in small and comes out a nation. He told Jacob, your name, your name is no longer Jacob. Your name is Israel. Everything that God's getting ready to do in your life, and that's why I'm telling you, whether it's your, your $333, whether it's your $121, your $91, your $70, your $50, your $33, your $3.33, your $2. I don't care what it is. I'm telling you right now, when you sow and you believe God, you'll see the manifestation. If you look on uh, that first row, I'm just talking about that second row, that second row is um, is me and Bob, that's me and Bob Whitaker right there inside of uh, the um, uh, 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 Bob Whitaker, uh, the, the Whitaker Publishing House. If you, if the- The, the warehouse, the warehouse. The warehouse right there. To the left of that picture, right there that she's pointing at, there are 10 pictures in there because it shows you all of those things that, that's concerning the warehouse. If you look up under that picture, you'll see me and Bob Whitaker walking and the end of that, that's a video. At the end of that video, you what you'll see is Bob Whitaker confirming everything we're talking about right now. I'm telling you all, you all we're, we're in a move of God. Now, I've been with this company for 20, Jesus, 26 years. I've been with Whitaker House for 26 years, and I have five publishers. The Whitaker House also runs the third largest, is it third or second now? The, the second, and then they are the largest in Canada. Right. And they, are, and they are second, I think, in the world. Right. Distribution house, world over. So listen, not, and, 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 and you know, this book will be in other languages. So this is this, this, this. That's what I was getting ready to say. He already said that he wants the book in Spanish and some other languages. Yes. He said because that area. Um, is going to grab a hold to oh, what God is yes, yes. and they're going to walk in that level of authority. It is, it was, it's wonderful. Yes, yes. And so, Steve, we're not, we're not a part of no, you know, uh, uh, ragtime band and nothing like that. This is major, 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 and we want to thank God for it. Hallelujah. You know, a uh, bishop, a uh, 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 bishop, um, the, the the bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Patterson's book, uh, the Path. Mm -hmm. I did. I, I did that book for him. I got him with his, his book deal. Uh, Daryl and 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 Daryl Hines and his wife. I got theirs for them. Wooden Patrick Wooden got there. I've been doing this for years, mm. quietly, but in all of the years, it's only five that started off with a major book deal, locked into others because of what God was going to do. And all the ones I talked about are bestsellers. You're the fifth one now. Number six. God's I believe God. this is this is this is too wonderful. Go and do it. All right. So we're going to Bible study. Thank you so much for watching Warfare Ecology. We can't take any questions today. Hold them for next week. It's going to be all of that. I'm excited. Let's get ready to see what God is going to do in the month of June. The paint on my door is blood. Well, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exodus 12, verses 12 and 13. The covenant of protection. Here's the instructions. Come, my people, go home and shut yourselves in. Go into seclusion for a while until the punishing wrath is passed, because God is sure to come from his place to punish the wrong of the people on earth. Earth itself will point out the bloodstains. It will show where the murdered have been hidden away. Isaiah 26, verse 20 and 21 in the Message Bible. Go home. Shut yourselves in, sanctify yourself, sanitize your home, love your children, sow a seed and worship God. 
Bishop George Bloomer. God bless you. See you tomorrow on Warfare Ecology.